typically try in VR for the first time, and especially room scale or standing, they aren't very aware of the fact that they can move around, that they can turn around full 360. And what this scene is designed to do is to allow you to ease into that. You have these things laid out in front of you, they're inviting. Over time, we want people to sort of get to know VR this way. So they'll start looking behind them and understanding that this is something where you, I can really move freely around, do anything I do, lay down on the floor. That's the way with, that we want people to get introduced to VR. This is really an inner, fully interactive world where I can do whatever I want. And of course the ultimate goal is that you experience something that you can't experience in any other way. It's only in virtual reality that you can experience this stuff. We want uh, the experience to be intuitive. That's one of the things that the motion controllers do for just computer science in general. It makes everything instantly accessible to people of all ages, pretty much. Okay, so if you draw something in the air, and then you grab it, just hold it and press down with your thumb. Oh, it turns <laughs> physical, so you can draw things in the air, you can draw shelves and place items on the shelves. <laughs> so we're, we're doing a lot of experimentation with also what's possible to do with this freedom of motion control, so freedom to create. We have this gameplay mode that we're doing internally where one player is actually just looking at the monitor and uses a gamepad, and the person in the VR sees him appear as a, as a bat. <laughs> then they can shoot each other and have these sort of fights and you can be drawing shields or drawing, or drawing things and throwing at the back. In virtual reality, you can design scenes where people behave like they would in real circumstances. Yeah. If you build the suspense up right, you get people to go into these different modes. This scene sort of is an experiment in, in, in building suspense over a short period of time and seeing what people actually do. But we've noticed that most people sort of get ready to, to fight some kind of demon that seems to be coming there. And then we have like a punchline that there's actually a cat that appears in the end. When the initial growl appears for the monster there, people go into a certain mindset like, what was that? Yeah. <laughs> and and what should I do? And at that point, we've we've placed these weapons there. So so of course you're gonna grab a weapon. So <laughs> if you design the scenes the right way, you can capture a certain behavior and feelings in your audience. And that's sort of what we're exploring with these mini scenes. It's how do we design scenes that really make you feel a certain way, that make you really experience something powerful. Just let people experience for a moment what it's like to be under the threat of something unknown coming towards you and you're not sure what it is and you have options to do stuff and you can hide behind a boulder or grab these weapons. It's absolutely vital to have an idea about what, what, what feeling you want to bring forth and how you want people to actually interact while they're in there. We want to maintain that sense of freedom Allow them to shoot everything they, that they want. Allow them to pick up anything. And let something magical happen almost every time they try something new with this freedom. 